Hi, it's Elizabeth Willits here from Investing in Women. Welcome to today's live Facebook and LinkedIn show. I'm today joined by Marie Checker um, from My Checkered Career. I'm going to be talking all about how to find work that works for you. So as people are logging on, if you can let us know if you can hear us all okay, um, give us a like or an emoji, that would be fabulous. But I'm today joined on Facebook and LinkedIn with Marie Checker from My Checkered Career. I'm going to be talking all about how to find work that works for you. So thank you so much, Marie, for joining us today. I'm really delighted to chat with you um, and to chat about this topic because I know that, you know, it's, it's really time because I, I got a message from a lady this morning who was sort of saying, I want a career change, but I don't know what to do. And I think that a lot of people can relate to that and feel... Mm feel like that that they they need a change but they're not quite sure what so hopefully this conversation will um will help prompt some thoughts so before we dive in it'd be really good if you could just give people an introduction to you and what you do sure thank you Liz thanks for inviting me this is um this is really awesome um so I am a career transformation coach um, I've been a coach, career coach for um, 10, 11 years, I think. Mm-hmm. I previously worked at PwC, um, where being a career coach was part of my role. Um, we had a really good career um, coaching culture in, in the organization. And I just found that that was one of the best parts of my job. Um, to, and so even when I was doing my global wellbeing lead role at PwC, which was an amazing um, role. Um, after a couple of years leading it through the pandemic and doing a master's, I was thinking just it was time for some change for me. And um, so really took hold of the sort of coaching and the passion that I had for supporting people and empowering people um, through that change and thinking about what they might want to do next um, and decided to go and have a go coaching starting my own coaching business um and I have my my uh web developer to thank for the the name inspiration of my really good name. Yeah, he's brilliant. I'm so inspired yeah, yeah. Nerd, love him um and yeah he said have you thought about this and I thought it was great um I mean I would say my whole life since probably being at school I've always questioned what am I going to do and really craving somebody helping me to work it out yeah Um, I wanted to be David Attenborough I wanted to be a rock climber um but I didn't achieve any of those things um (laughs) and um but you know and and just sort of found myself going through the sort of steps of education attempted a levels flunked them and um then going out to work and doing a number of different roles in organizations um different industries and just not really having a clear direction for a long time um but what i did realize is that through each of those different roles i was accumulating different skills different skill sets and different experience um some of them that i loved and some of them that i never wanted to do again so you know that was um all good learning so i i I really feel like i've had quite a checkered career yes what what was your early career like before you got into pwc and corporate um yeah so i i did a lot of temp work i worked in it as i worked in um customer services i've tried being a pa i'm really not good at that at all um i have been i've worked in a lot of training l d space um yeah, which marketing into, okay hmm? yeah which sort of leads into what you do now then the l d yeah so the l d it was actually my experience in l d in project coordination that um got me my role at pwc so i went traveling between i went traveling for my 30s not my whole 30s obviously when i hit 30 i went traveling with a friend to india we wanted a um, culture shock and we definitely got it going to India. So that was great. Yeah. Um, when I came back from there, I thought I probably should start thinking about getting a proper job now and not just flitting from one place to the next, which is a really interesting mindset that I had at that age that, you know, this idea of a proper job was something that you go into and yeah. you're moving up the ladder, blah, 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 really kind of um, uh, old 
perspective of what career is. Um, I personally don't see that as a healthy career mentality anymore. I think actually um, breadth of experience and being passionate or just enjoying what you do, having meaningful work, knowing what gets you out of bed in the morning and feeling excited about it. You know, that's to me, that's what a career is now. It's about finding something that you really want to get your teeth stuck into and having a go knowing why you're doing it and what's motivating you to do it um not about earning money and you know that's me personally that's not one of my core values is is about the money um but for some it is it's the motivator that you know is going to get them out of bed i think that changes somewhat from your early years to later what i've found in my coaching is that and for i guess from life experience as well when you're in your sort of teens and 20s is all about earning some money having some fun and and you know building up that page maybe you're in an office and you're looking Mm -hmm. at those people and you thought maybe aspiring to be them because you know they may be not getting so much I mean when I was sort of in my 20s social media wasn't as big yeah same now (laughs) So you would have been seeing all the examples of people working and, mm. and all different things. Your influence is yeah in your office, and that's you think maybe the only thing. Yeah, it's so true. I definitely didn't have um, anywhere near the sort of visibility of you know what's possible now. Mm. What the different um, yeah what what you could be doing. Um, having that sort of variety of role models I suppose yeah that's a really excellent point um so yes that's what I did I ended up at PwC um it was I was actually very fortunate I got offered a job at um what was called um I don't know they're Blackberry but I can't remember what they're now called the what they called themselves but anyway so it was Blackberry or PwC Blackberry was based in Slough and PwC was based in London Bridge and I wanted to move into London, not Slough. So I decided to take that job and it was a far more interesting role. And um, yeah, so there was more opportunities there. Um, but I spent, sort of, I would say that sort of 10 years of my time at PwC, starting off with that aspiration to become a manager and progress up the, the ladder. Um, But then I had a sort of series of life events, um, personal injuries and my mum going through all kinds of health um, issues as well. And it's just sort of this continuous change of perspective of what life is about, what am I doing, how am I being treated at work, um, how are other, you know, and and experiencing things in the workplace as well that just started making me think about, you know, how change is done to people, how people are treated in work environments um, and wanting that to change, uh, which is how I ended up in the well-being role um, because I would say through communication, tenacity and job crafting, (laughs) you know, just putting yourself out there and um, telling people what it is you want to do and seeing what what doors open. Um, I've become a huge... Um, believer in planned happenstance uh, Mm. over the over the years in that you know you put yourself out there you talk to people you find something to get your teeth stuck into and see what inspires you and see what doors open for you and just be really open-minded about it Um, and and things start to happen with your mindset and it's quite it's quite amazing really yeah Um, yeah Oh wow, what a story. So <laughs> you obviously thought you needed to change. You left um, was it PwC? Was yeah. that your last corporate role? And you made the yeah. decision to leave. Mm-hmm. Um it's a really brave decision. <laughs> I don't know, a lot of people would find that I personally found it would find that a really tough decision. I was actually quite fortunate that I was made redundant. Yeah. I didn't have to make that choice. Yeah. I um, think yeah. yeah. It's incredibly tough. I'm not going to lie, but I spent a lot of time thinking about it, yeah. um, and but not just thinking about it, but planning for it. I mean, I would say, and I, I hate sort of telling my coaches this sometimes because I think it puts the fear of God into them, because I say I say I'd been planning my exit for about eight years. I knew for that length of time that I wasn't in the right role, and it was just, yeah. and I didn't, and I think I always knew I wasn't supposed to be in an office in a corporate world it just never felt like the right space for me 
but knowing what to do what's how to change that how to <clears throat> you know go somewhere else and do something different it's just really hard so it was a journey of trying to work out who I am and what do I want to do and what other opportunities are out there. And when you get into that sort of um, situation where you're independent, you're, you've got financial um, things that, you know, you need to be um, paying out each month, you know, you've become addicted to this paycheck, the idea of suddenly yeah. walking away from so that. responsibilities, don't you? Um, sure. Exactly. So um, it's really hard. You have to really, really make some plans and work out how you're going to do it and um that's what I did over a long period of time took the sort of route of trying new things out within the organization because that was yeah. the safe way to do it to start with um yeah. and then eventually I just knew I just knew it was time to leave at that point it had got it had come to a, a head um yeah and I just thought no I've 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 been fortunate enough to be in a position where I could save money and I can walk away from this now and be okay yeah um, so it was yeah it was scary but it was it was planned yeah so mm. so so bringing this back to sort of an everyday person maybe they don't have savings maybe mm. yeah they don't have cushion, maybe they don't know what they want to do mm-hmm. so maybe using this person that messaged me earlier as an example so they want to change they're not quite mm. sure what they want to do maybe Mm -hmm. how do you how do I know if you actually need to change or you're just having a bad day Uh, well yeah that's a it's a good question I think um there's no way of me saying it's one or the other it's it's integral to the person that you're talking to um for me I knew I wanted change because it was a constant niggle it's this constant voice telling me that it's not right this isn't right and and that in itself was really impacting my mental well-being um and whilst you could you can have you can enjoy your job you can be happy at work you can like your colleagues but there's some there was something in me just niggling saying this is no this is just not not right for me um but that's you know that's my own personal experience there are um I, some of my coaches that just feel like they they just know I just I'm not the right fit for this place yeah. and I need to look for something else or it could be that you know your your core values have changed you know who yeah. you were five ten years ago that's not who you are now things have changed your life is different um for whatever reason so it's time to reassess you know what is that who are you now and I think if you if you are at a point of thinking I'm I'm not happy this isn't right for me you need to start from scratch and yeah. think well, who am I who yeah. am I now it's a real it's a it's a process it's a process of discovery discovering about who you are and starting to think about well, what do I want what does that look like and you don't have to think necessarily of a job or a type of work because that could come a bit further along I think it's all about knowing who you are and what do you need or want from your life and from work what's Mm -hmm. going to be meaningful to you and why are you doing it so if you're thinking for example of just changing to do something completely different but in another uh, a similar industry okay so how can you think about making that career change um who can you learn from what skills can you learn um but if you want to start doing something completely different and maybe start up your own business you know that's a huge transition to start thinking about and planning for why are you doing it? You really, really got to understand, you know, what's, what's your, why, what's your motivator? What's going to, what's really driving you to do this? So for you example, uh, we talked about this on the podcast is that, you know, yes, you were forced to leave for your redundancy, but you knew you didn't want this to happen to other people for people to find or women particularly to find themselves in this situation how yeah. can you help them and that was your driver and it's been amazing and look what you've achieved so it's really it's really important before you even think about making big changes and leaving positions leaving yeah. jobs really know who you are and what it is you're trying to achieve and and yeah. what, what is your what is your um um, the words are falling out falling out of my head as I'm trying to talk but you know I think it's 
So uh, it's important to know what what is important to you. Actually, mm -hmm. I know we talked a little bit about this at the beginning. You know, you when the when you're younger, and maybe you know, 10, 15 years ago, it did feel like there was a career ladder and success was mm -hmm. at the top of that ladder. Yeah. And there's another podcast that's Squiggly Careers podcast, and careers do look really different now, don't you? And there's mm -hmm. not a job for life. Yeah. So it's about not comparing yourself to others, staying oh, in your lane, yeah. and what's what's important for you, so you know pop in your lane I suppose yeah I mean comparison can be so detrimental to our a, a success and our mental health yeah. um in so many ways not just in careers but just in life in general if we're looking at other people and what they're doing and comparing ourselves and we're just we're just setting ourselves up for a bad time really because everyone is different you know our our, our life is different our yeah environment is different where we're coming from is different you know everything is different so you it's yeah. just an impossible comparison you know there's no like for like in this situation yeah. um so yeah I would definitely try and avoid that and I have to say that's one of the things that I def I did struggle with coming into like LinkedIn from a business perspective because you can't help but see what everyone else is achieving and then start colleagues don't you oh they've got that promotion yeah, exactly <laughs> i've done this i haven't done that what you know and i think actually that's that's one of the things that's been um quite hard actually being a coach um and being in a well-being environment as well when i left um when i left pwc because it's a really saturated market now there are so many coaches out there. Everyone wants to work in well-being. So how do you stand out? You know, you've got all these people with really impressive um, letters after their name and, you know, experience and blah, blah, blah. Everyone's very good at talking the talk. Well, not everyone. The people that you hear because they're very yeah, good at you talking. Your new, your new role models, yeah. <laughs> so it can be, it can be quite, quite challenging to sort of see through that and not, compare yourself and just continue on your own journey you know knowing why you're doing it and um but it can be hard it can be hard to yeah to stop yourself from doing that and and keep yourself motivated I suppose the biggest thing is understanding your why what's going to mm -hmm. get you up in the morning potentially what's going to get you up in the morning if you're not going to get pet you know is, I think there's especially if you're thinking about setting up your own business it might take a while to start getting some traction so how yeah. what advice would you give to people for knowing what their why is and actually it's also applicable for someone that wants to change in their career that may have to start the bottom again and, and work their way up mm. yeah that, completely lost and think, I don't know what I want to do yeah I don't I, like what I'm doing <laughs> yeah I think I mean there's 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 sort of two two questions there there's if knowing your why that could be something that you find out along the way as you become inspired by other people you know you might not know what your why is I think or your why for doing something I guess understanding your why why are you leaving why do you want change that's that's the key to start with um you might not know your why for your next career or next job um but why do you need that change you know like going back to your point about you just having a bad day is it yeah. your manager that's pissing you off or, you know, is it, you know, apologies for swearing, um, but, you know. <laughs> Very <laughs> well, <I'm> like, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, it's, if, you, if you've got to understand the right reasons for leaving to be able to then know the right reasons for what's next. Yeah. You know, is it actually a career change that you want? It might just or, be the manager that you can't stand and therefore you could get your yeah. job another organization and be yeah, perfectly happy exactly exactly it could be that you know you're just not getting the flexibility in your role that you need and so therefore change of organization to somewhere that does offer those things is better and, and will resolve this need for change so it's, it's really i guess the understanding your why is like what why do you need change what's behind this what's driving this change and really understanding that before you start taking any more steps like quitting and not knowing what you're doing next yeah we've got some really good comments coming in oh, um <laughs> so some of them i might come back to yours beam at the end um because that's a brilliant comment it's more about how you built your coaching business mm. ali has said um she's biased but having the space to discuss what makes you tick and then 
uh, taking that forward to create your very own bespoke plan for your career with a mm -hmm. coach is just so exciting. She's really enjoying the conversation. Claire has said, really important to go on your own journey and not to compare. And then she's also added, I wonder if people sometimes get overwhelmed by trying to define their why as they think it should be something huge. It can be as simple as being kind, being a compassionate leader, etc. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no rules about this, but it's just it's really important to know what it is, what it is for you. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of people that talk about finding your passion for your mm -hmm. next move. And I think that's a really unhealthy way to look at it because okay. people I don't know what they're passionate about or maybe not aren't passionate about stuff it's work maybe they're passionate the about gardening and it's something yeah, they can do the weekend. Exactly. Yeah. and you know and, and 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 a lot of um coaches use the framework of ikigai where they talk about you know what are you passionate about what does the world need and you know so where can you make money through that yeah, but what if your passions are just that they they are something that you you love doing but the it's just it's just a passion that you love it's not something that's going to make you money the world's not screaming out for this need um it's, it, it's okay not to be passionate about what you do you've just got to be able to get you know some motivation understand what that is um find your work meaningful um yeah. and i think it, and be in an environment that suits you, you know, mm -hmm. finding the right team or the right um, organization, the right work setup, all of that's got to be right for you to feel happy, healthy, work life balance, um, and go and going to work feeling, you know, this is this is this is working for me. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be and we shouldn't we shouldn't beat ourselves up if what we're doing is not something that you're hugely passionate about yeah. because i think at the end of the day a lot of people we go to work to make money we start businesses to make money you know um i love being a coach but it's not all i want to do you know i love the idea of um portfolio careers and doing different things so whilst i'm very happy at the moment i'm focusing on developing my coaching business I'm also really loving um, doing house renovations and things like that, you know, which is completely different and it's exciting. I'm very fortunate to be able to do that kind of stuff. But I think it's it's um, it's exciting to think about var variation and other opportunities and just having a go at stuff and, and you know, seeing seeing what works for you, seeing yeah. how life fits together. I think I think the goal is we all want a fulfilled life, and that is it's a life, isn't it? And a career, or a job, a business, whatever is just a path. Exactly. Part There's other things: it is. Like relationships, hobbies, friendship. Yeah. Um, yeah. When we think about well-being as a, you know, as a, as a a circle, you know, your career it's huge. Your your job it's huge because it is yeah. a big part of what you do and where you spend your time. But there are so many other factors that all are encompassed around this. So, you know, depending on what's important to you and what life stage you are at you know if you've got young kids and you know is your um what do you do with your partner do you do you want more of a social life is your career your main focus for a bit you know really yeah really up to you to sort of craft what that looks like and where you get the most fulfillment and the most energy from and don't neglect those things you know yeah. focusing on a career is great um but i'm very uh, holistic in the way that I coach people on careers taking into account you know all the other factors that go on in life and making sure that you are balanced and have that work-life balance and that you are focusing on your well-being so that you can feel happy and fulfilled and in, in every area as much as possible yeah um, yeah <laughs> I'm so very passionate about this I could talk about it for ages. Really interesting. so we talked about knowing what your why is yeah, and we also before we went on the call talked about your soup. How do you identify your superpowers and what role do they play in you finding something that works for you? Yeah, so I think it's really important when we're thinking about specifically around career change and thinking about it as a journey. And the way to do that is to be identifying what are your strengths, and by strengths, I mean. What are you good at and what gives you energy when you do them? Um, what skills do you have from all the things that you do in life, not just your career? What else do you do outside of 
um, you know, juggling kids and school runs and things. I mean, you have to be a flipping project manager to be a mum, I think, personally, you know, all these managing all these resources and, and timelines. Um, and so it's really about identifying those things and then looking at what's transferable. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you want to think about career change as a journey, it's about taking some small steps yeah. in a direction. Um I, I love the phrase following a compass, not a map, because you have this idea of where you want to get to, but you don't necessarily know the exact route. So yeah. you think, okay, I think that's where I want to go. That's where my heart is at the moment. That's where my head is, whatever it is that's that's guiding you there. And think about what are those small steps that we can take and how do my current skills and um, strengths get me to that next step? And it might be that you take a few little steps like this, but you are still aiming towards that one goal. And that goal might change, And yeah. you know, to be honest, because what happens when you're going through career change, transformation, you network more, you talk to people more, you get inspired by so many people. Mm-hmm. And your ideas of what's important or what you want to do changes because yeah. you learn so many more things and you think, oh, that's, do you know what? That sounds super cool. I want to have a go at that. So you learn more things as well. So when I talk about superpowers, it's really just, it comes back to this discovery and understanding who you are, what drives you, what motivates you, but also what are your, what are your soft skills as well as what are your hard skills? And by that, I mean, soft skills are things like, you know, talking about resilience and um, how you lead, what type of leader are you? Or, you know, what type of worker are you? You Just just how do you communicate who you are, um, how you deal with situations, how you um, have conversations, how do you hold yourself? Um, And hard skills are obviously things like project management or computer, whatever it is, yeah, yeah, so many different things. but just yeah understanding how they can fit into the next next part of your journey um and then what do you need to learn and yeah. i think it's really important to just bear in mind as well is what's your what are your superpowers now you know you can learn more and and develop more and develop yeah. yourself and that's really important in today's world we have to take control of our own future our career our life because honestly as much as organizations say about well-being and they're going to do this and do that if you are not doing it for yourself then really nobody else does that much if if you're and it's been really good actually i mean but even just youtube if you want to find something out there's so many videos how to tutorials oh, yeah. you can yeah. up yourself upskill yourself really cheaply easily yeah many it's, cases are free and it's just your time that it is and and lots of people are very open to having conversations about what they do and what they've learned and you know finding mentors to help you through what it what you know whatever it is using working with a coach you know to help you through whatever it takes it's it's just it's just a case of working out what you need how you're going to get to that next step and your superpowers are you know what have you got now in your toolbox that's going to get you to this next step or where can those superpowers get you yeah and then what can, else can you add to that toolbox and to get you to that next step? So that's why it can really help working with coaches to help you break down and, and help you understand. Yeah, what, identify what are those things. powers and what you need. Yeah. yeah. But there are also lots of free resources. I will say, you know, if you go and Google things like strength finders um, yep. and, you know, there's, 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 so many, there's so many free tools out there um, that can help you to you know work out who you are and what are your sort of skills and strengths and things so i've read a book actually identify your skill gallop is it gallop yeah yeah, yeah. gallop is quite a famous one um it was really helpful it was on amazon and it did really help me just say oh that's right that that is why i do that and yeah i'll I'll just say one thing around the online sort of personality tests and Gallup is included in this and I'm just saying this because you know we learned all about this in my master's as well that um I I, you take them as they are but just understand that you can be in a very different mindset 
when you answer each of these things, which can give you different results yeah. each time. So um, they are fun. They can give you some insight, but don't take them as the be all and end all. Yeah. You know, talk to friends as well. Get people to give you feedback as well, because all of these things um, will give you a much more rounded view. Yeah. Sarah says she loves it. Follow a compass, not a map. <laughs> Enjoying the journey as well as your end destination means, means that you take a more fluid path. That's a good point. And 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 just to that comment, I I think it's always a journey. I don't want to get to the end because the end is you know six foot under in my <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. so I I don't feel like I'm ever going to stop having a career until I can't get off the sofa or something. You know, and hopefully that's a long time away. I don't think retirement is something that, you know, many people are going to have that privilege when we get older. Um, and also, I, a lot of I don't know, personally, I don't know if I want to stop working and it doesn't have to, it doesn't even have to be paid work, whatever it is. For me, a career is just that constant lifelong learning and being involved in the world and, you know, and whatever that looks like. Yeah, really um, contributing. Yeah. So it is a constant journey, a constant um reevaluating who you are and what you're doing and are you still aligned with where you're going you know and it's okay to change your mind that's yeah. something that I've learned as well you know changing your mind about these things is it's okay <laughs> so we talked a bit about you found your superpowers you may start to make that change what happens and it must happen to a lot of people things don't go to plan they don't they start the business it doesn't make the money oh. they thought they were going to make they start that new job they don't like it um that's life yeah it's life right isn't that isn't it all about having a go yeah and it's okay it i'm not saying this flippantly because you know people can invest lots of money in starting businesses and when they go wrong it's i i can't imagine how miserable that feels um so i'm not belittling that at all but at the end of the day you know life is about having a go at stuff Mm -hmm. it really is and um this is why it's always good to think about goals and having a plan and thinking about what are your challenges going to be what could come up that through planning and thinking about this in advance you can mitigate the impact that it has on what you're doing and obviously there's only there's there's only so much you can do to mitigate things and you know sometimes things fail um sometimes things aren't as you expect um I think COVID was a lesson wasn't it <laughs> no one was expecting that and it scuppered a lot of people's businesses jobs it did it did and a lot of people bounced back from it and said okay well if I can't do that like yourself then I'll have a go at something else mm -hmm. and it's 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 about having that resilience I guess to keep having a go at things and not seeing these as failures but as learning okay yeah. I mean life is about having a go at stuff I think a lot of people have a lot of fear around change and the impact and making that change happen especially if we're sort of comfortable what yep. we're doing those I think those are the hardest situations just you're comfortable you've got a nice paycheck coming in you know you're not really that happy or you don't really like your job that much but the risk, the fear of change and what could go wrong yeah. is usually a bit too overwhelming. And so therefore you don't make any change. Yeah. Um, so, it, and it's hard. I'm not going to lie. It's hard. You, you, and you can only do it when you are ready and to make those changes. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's about having a go, isn't it? You know, and don't see it as a failure. It's not, it's not you failing it's an attempt it's a you know it's a business that's that's one thing I learned from a business coach Just don't see your business as you your business is what you're putting out there at the moment to see you know what sticks what do people need so if you're working at that and then it's you know that's not working it's not you failing it's yeah. just going to keep having to go and finding what sticks what's where's the traction from what you're doing and if it's not there have a go at something else yeah or if that does if if you actually try something new and realize i'm really rubbish at this 
it's okay to you know step away and say maybe that's not the best thing for me I'll, I'll try something else and yeah. this is why we try and do things in in small stages so that the impact you recommend of- breaking a plan down then into little yeah. steps so you'd see who's walking along that journey yeah so you can almost start getting a taste for things you know this is why i like the um you know the compass not a map thing and taking small steps it really helps to break down the impact of it if you suddenly realize you're going in the wrong direction or that it's not right you'll know hopefully by doing it in smaller stages that when it's not right you you can you can stop it or change course yeah. before the impact is huge yeah. you know so rather than just quitting your job to go and do an upholstery course and then realize oh actually I'm I don't really enjoy upholstery after all and I'm not very good at it now I've got to try and get a job again and you know so how do you how do you do things together in alignment um you know a lot of people do this they they do change at the same time as what they're doing yeah obviously yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. impact sarah says no such thing as failure if you learn from the obstacle or challenge yeah exactly exactly oh it's been such good advice oh let me go back to the top question that we had Mm. because that was from um lima she said she'd love to know how you built your coaching business in terms of your usp Mm. attracting clients well, that is a good question. I'm still working it out, if I'm honest. Um, so my my career coaching business, I've really, um, despite being a career coach, having been a career coach um, for the last sort of decade, the actual business side of it myself, um, I think my USP that I'm starting to formulate is the, <clears throat> the well-being background that I have as well, yeah. and having this real focus on... Um, career change and but building it in with that sort of flexibility work-life balance really making sure that people feel that their well-being is at the core of this change and um that the change is meaningful and it aligns with their values so that they're going into a space that is um what they're that they're really drawn to as opposed to um just you know just change for change sake you know looking for a new job and having a go but um so what's my usp i think it's that basically (laughs) about well-being as well as helping people through these transitions um because having having transitioned many times and it can be incredibly scary i when i work with my coaches i just feel so excited for them that they have come to me because they have this readiness for change now they want it to happen and then they are gonna they're gonna they've invested you know this is gonna happen I'm gonna make this happen I'm gonna make some change and it's so exciting to be in that in that space with them um yeah (laughs) brilliant so where can people find you connect with you and learn more about you and the services that you offer yeah so I mean I'm I'm terrible at social media but I am on them as uh, so LinkedIn is where I spend most of my time so uh, Marie Checker that you can see on the screen um, I also have a my checkered career website yeah um, and I'm on Facebook uh, I'm on Instagram as well which I'm now starting to use a little bit more with some encouragement from <laughs> people um, so I am all over the place I think there is only one Marie Checker that I've ever been able to find on Google so as long as you spell my name right you'll be able to find me <laughs> all right perfect well thank you so much for your time today marie um Karen said great talk thank you and um, and someone else has said thanks elizabeth marie really enjoyed your talk great advice so thank you so much it's been absolutely brilliant to chat with you and thank you so much to everybody that's watched this week as well thank you see you soon bye